My name is Hans Peter Sale. I come from Denmark and I have been doing review and testing of water cooling parts for the last four years for different sites and building my own water cool system to try and show people what they can actually do if they have a noisy computer or just want more performance. Uh, we'll be doing a presentation and then I will be showing the different water cooling parts that you can go out and buy and after that we'll, we'll uh, put the parts together in a whole system and you can see how it actually works. So, let's get started. What is water cooling and why would you want to put water in your PC? Actually, the most frequently asked question in water cooling is do you actually use water? And you don't. Because if you use water, it'll fill up with algae and um, it'll, it's very corroding for the computer. So you'll have to use some sort of fluid that has um, additives and stuff in it that'll kill the algae and prevent bacteria from living in the system. And you can, you can buy this fluid finished from shops so you can make it yourself. But it's just very important to remember this. Because if you just use water from the tap, your system will turn green within a few months. Uh, is it dangerous? It's not dangerous if you do it properly. You have to remember that you have to leak test the system, you have to be careful about what you're doing, and you don't have to spill water everywhere. And if you fill up these criteria, you won't have a problem with the, with the water cooling. And it won't mess up your computer or shortcut, so shortcut anything. And most importantly, why, what is the important, what is the advantage of putting water in your computer? And the advantage is, is that you can use much less radiators to cool the computer because water has... Can we turn it a bit down? Can we turn it a bit down? A bit down? All right. <laughs> okay, we'll continue. Um, water can take about 10 times the amount of heat that air can do. So for each molecule, water can take and transport about 10 times as much heat, which means that you don't have to uh, have as many fans running and it can quicker transport the heat away from the, compo away from the components. Mm, there we go. Okay. So, which components do you need to build a water cooling system? First of all, you'll need a pump, which is the heart of the water cooling system. The pump actually pumps the water around and then makes sure that the water flows over the different components. You also need a reservoir, because the reservoir is where you'll pour fluid into the system and where you'll make sure that the air can get out. Other than that, you're going to need water blocks, a radiator to transport the heat away from the water into the air, and you'll need fans and fittings, which are the little things that you use to connect the hoses to all of the blocks. And other than that, you're just going to need hose, and you're going to need fluid, and you're up and running for a water cooling system. The pump itself is, um, there's many different pumps. Depending on price and size, they can pump between 50 to 140 liters per hour between uh, um, around a computer system. And um, if you don't have a fast enough pump or a powerful enough pump, the water will not get transported around the system, which will actually do so that the water in the blocks will boil and leaks can occur. And the reservoir. The reservoir is a thing that you're going to need to, when you pour fluid into the build, you're going to need to get the air inside out. Because if there's air in the fluid while it travels around, it will hinder performance and it will also make a lot of noise. So if you see in this video, when we pour water into the system, it's going to go right down to the pump and then around. And the, um, the reservoir will then trap the air in top and keep the fluid in the bottom and then make it run smoothly around. And it'll take, depending on what reservoir you have, bleeding, as we're calling it, to get the air out of the system can take anywhere between 15 minutes to two days. So it's about choosing the right components. In... So we can skip this. Okay, so the water blocks is probably the most important part of the system. In a normal graphic card like this, you have an air cooler that sits on top of the card and then blows air in over a heatsink. Water cooling works by taking the water and pushing it down over the component and normally it would be a, 
a copper block or in older days it was aluminium but you, we have we don't use aluminium anymore because water is much copper is much better and the water blocks you can get water blocks for almost any components in the system you can get it for the ram the gpu the cpu you can get it for the motherboard you can even get it for hard drives and fan controllers so you, it is actually possible to make a fully water-cooled computer without any fans beside the ones on the radiator. And the radiators. Many people ask, how big a radiator do I need in my water-cooling system? And that all depends on which component you have and how, and how silent you want the system to be. In a normal system, you can actually get away with using a quite small radiator, but then you have to have fans that is... Um, fan that turns quite fast and makes a lot of noise, which is a bad thing. So if you step up and use a bigger radiator, you can actually just take the fans and turn them off, or almost completely off, to get a very silent system with still a better performance than air cooling. Okay, and uh, when people are talking radiators, there is a large question, which is FPI, which means fins per inch. Fins per inch means um, how is the density in the radiator. If you want a radiator with a very high performance, you're going to need a high fin per inch count, which is what you can see over here. And I can also show it on the radiator here. And these are the actual fins in the radiator. And depending on how far they are together, the radiator can transfer more heat away but it also needs faster fans to push the air through the fins. And if you want a very silent system, you can take low fin per inch, which is the one over to the left, and you can use very slow moving, slow moving fans for this. So the general rule is if you have high fin per inch, you want high speed fans, and if you have low fin per inch, you want low speed fans. Fittings and hoses. There is normally around three different kind of fittings. There is the compression fitting, where you push the hose into the fitting here, and then tighten it. And there is the push in, which is very, it's not used very much anymore because it has to use very hard hose. So you can't, it's not as flexible as what you can use with the others. And the last one is the push on, where you simply push the hose on and you can zip tie it together or you can use little locks. Um, compression fittings are normally the most expensive ones where push on are the cheapest fittings you can buy. So it's all about what you want in your system and how you want the looks to be. So the fluid in a water cooling system, as we mentioned before, it's a very bad idea to take water in from directly from the tap so what you can do is to buy pre-made fluid which contains all the additives you need in a water cooling system. And as you can see on the pictures here, you can get these in all of the colors of the rainbow if you want. You can also get them in clear. But it's also, it's up to what you want in your system. In this system, for example, we used white fluid because that was the overall theme. But you can also get UV and you can get green and black and also depends on your color scheme or what color you like the most. So, the thermal paste. When you're mounting blocks, there is, um, you have to put thermal paste on the GPU and then mount the block on top of it. And there are three different ways to do this, which we can see in this video. Normally, I'm very sorry it's in Danish, but uh, I'll try to explain. Uh, normally, you'll just place a little drop size on the top of the GPU and then you'll just mount the components on top of that. And this is a good idea because it's simple and you know how much that you're going to use. And then when we see like this, we can see that it's not the most perfect way because it doesn't spread all the way to the sides. It has to have a lot of pressure. I'll just let it finish. So as you can see here, the thermal paste doesn't get all, all out to the edges. So method number two that is probably 
also wide use, is where you put a drop in the middle of the CPU, and then you try to get it all over the CPU, so the CPU is completely covered when you're putting the blocks on. You can do this with a credit card, or a racer, or even your fingers. It also depends on what you're going to do. This takes a while, and the good thing about this is that you can make sure that the, that the component is completely covered in thermal paste. And when you then put the component over it, the bad thing about this is that they can get air trapped in it, and you are not entirely sure of if the layer is even. Which leads us to way number three, which will show up in just a moment. And this is probably my favorite method because with this method you're gonna make sure that you're getting the whole component um, covered in, in thermal paste. This is all uh, normally referred to as the cross because you just place a cross of thermal paste, a very thin cross, over the GPU, and then you just put your component on, which will make sure that it's all over the thing. Oh, so the general water cooling setup. There is practically only one rule when you're building a water cooling system. And that is that the reservoir has to be before the pump. We'll just let them finish. Uh, up. There we go. The reservoir, as in this case is this one, has to be before the pump because the pump, which is indicated by the green over here, has to draw the water from the reservoir. And this is done easiest if there isn't any blocks to hinder it. And also when you're filling the system, it's a good idea to have the reservoir before the pump because then it'll automatically just drop down into the pump. And that leads us to the second rule of water cooling. The reservoir always has to be on top of the pump, because if it's not, the pump cannot suck in water from the bottom. Because a pump doesn't work like an air pump, it has to have water in it when it starts, or else it'll just wobble around and ruin the pump. So you may never start a pump if there isn't any water in it. And from this one, you can see that in this setup, we went from the pump to the CPU block, to the GPU block, and then back to the radiators and back to the reservoir. So, when you have to mount blocks, this is a rather long video of the mounting of this particular water block on a AMD card. You have to make sure that the old cooler is away and the old thermal paste is away. And when you have to move it on this graphic card, you have to remove the 10 screws on the back side of the card to take off the old water block or the old air block. In this card, it's a quite quick process because the stock cooler isn't very big. So it's, it's, it's looked like it's very difficult, but it's actually very hands-on to get to. And you just have to make sure that you don't place it on a towel or anything that can conduct electricity. Because you might be able to um, gather static electricity and then fry the cart. But as long as you place it on a table or anything that doesn't conduct, then you're safe. So, when you have to take off the old cooler, you have to remove the thermal paste from the block because if you don't put on new thermal paste or don't clean the block, then it's not going to cool very well. It's basically going to give you some very bad temperatures. So you can take some, uh, um, what's it called, um, coffee filters because they are free of little dust particles. And you can clean the, the block with that and then take a little alcohol and rub it behind to get it completely clean. After this, you'll normally have to put thermic tape on the block on some of the components. This is always in, there is a manual in each block that you buy that detailed describe how you can mount this block on your cart. So for this particular block, we'll have to use thermal paste on the RAM and the volt regulators. And we'll have to use thermal paste on the GPU itself. 
thermic tape normally comes in one big block that you'll have to cut yourself. So you have to measure out how much you will need for each RAM block or each volt regulator or anything like that. And once that's done, you just have to mount the cooling uh, paste. And again, like we showed before, mount it in a little cross because that is the most optimal way to do it. And you're sure that the, that the thermal paste gets all over the block. And if you think that you're having trouble finding a graphic card and a, and a water block that fits together, there is a website called coolingconfigurator.com which will allow you to select the component you have and it'll suggest a water block for this particular component that will fit. Because with water blocks and graphic cards, there is normally, with this graphic card alone, I think there is three different versions of the graphic card and three different versions of the water block. So you, you can't just buy the graphic card and then just buy a random water block with that name on because it's all different. So you'll have to get something that fits together. And that website kind of do that for you so you have so you don't have to go out and search if your card is a reference design or what particular card it is. So when the cooling paste is done and you have the block, you normally you you just have to mount the screws onto the block again. And if you buy separate equipment such as a back plate to make it look better, which is what you can see in this one, I'll show this later. You just have to screw it all tight and make sure that the components fit. And when this is done, you actually have a fully water-cooled graphic card. You can also choose the easy way out and buy pre-mounted blocks on cards. There is companies such as EVGA that sells these and also many water-cooling shops sells cards as, as that. They normally charge a few extra bucks to mount the block on the card for you. But then you're certain that it fits, and then you're certain that it also works. So that could be a good idea if you are a starter within water cooling. And that is basically how to mount the blocks. For the CPU, it's a tiny bit different, because you have this small block that goes onto the CPU instead of a normal CPU cooler. And you just have to demount the original CPU cooler and put new thermal paste on, and you can mount this block in the system just as done with this one. And we'll show how to do that later uh, on our system over here. So, installing the reservoir and the pump. As we mentioned before, it's very crucial in the system to have the reservoir at the very top of the, of the build. Because if you don't have that, you're going to have trouble by filling and draining the, 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 draining the loop from water. Um, because if it's not in the top point, you can't make gravity work in your favor. So from this one, which is a normal full tower case, just put the reservoir as high up as you can and the pump in the very bottom of the case. And then everything will go much more smooth. So, installing radiators. When you install the radiators in the system, you need to take the radiator, and normally cases have pre-made slots for radiators. For example, this case has the room for two radiators, two radiators in the top and one in the bottom. But you have to check your case, because some cases only fit what we call a 2 times 120 millimeter radiator which basically means that it'll fit two 120 millimeter fans. And some cases only fit one 120 millimeters. So when you build your water cooling system, make sure that you know which case you're gonna use and which case you actually have, because this is a very crucial part of it. So basically, the steps you're gonna take is you pick a case that you like, and then you buy the components from that. Because if you buy the components, then you're locked to maybe a certain type of case. Yeah. And that is the presentation. And now we will talk about the different parts and show these. And you are welcome to come up and see those. Um, the first part we can talk about is the radiator. When you buy this from the shop, it will normally have little 
fill plugs in it that you'll need to take out. Because if you don't, it'll leak all over the place. So, the radiator will normally come equipped with little plugs that you'll need. And these plugs go onto the radiator to make sure that the water doesn't get out. Like that. And then you have to mount two other fittings on the radiator, which is what we have bought here. So, in this particular radiator, you can see that you can mount the fittings in any direction that you want. You just have to remember that you have to mount one fitting in one of these plugs and one fitting in this one because otherwise the, the water won't be able to travel around. And I forgot to mention, if you have any question midway, just raise your hand to one of the components and we'll take that question at the time instead of waiting for the last. So, the next component is the pump that we'll talk about. Um, you can buy pumps that is assembled when you get them, or you can buy pumps um, separately from a pump top, like this one that we have got here. Um, normally this one will come with a not so good top that will only allow you to use some large hoses for it. So for this one we have bought a secondary top that we will mount on this pump to get both better performance and ease of uh, ease of mounting and things like that. So we'll just unscrew these. So, when you have gotten this off, it's crucial to remember the O-ring, which is what will hinder the water from leaking from this block on out. The O-ring is a little piece of rubber, and you need to make sure that it's um, without cracks in it, and that it's, well, complete as this. So, you just mount the O-ring on the pump, mount the pump in the block, and then take this. And remember to mount it correctly, like this. And down. When you're pulling in the screws again, it's best to tighten them from corner to corner instead of going one way around because if you do that you can skew the rock or make it go in in an awkward position or way
So basically just remember to take one in the corner and then the other corner and then repeat that process until you got them all. And there we go. On this particular pump, you can actually control the pump speed on the back side. So if you think that the pump is too noisy in your system, you can just turn it a bit down. And, but if you do this, remember to watch your temperatures, because if your temperatures go through the roof, then the water is flowing too slow. So just find the golden middle way where you can have a silent system and some good temperatures in the system. So. Next up is the reservoir. This particular reservoir is from EK and you can buy several equipment for it because when it comes standard it has these little tubes inside which will allow you to take the intake to go up on the top to make the air go out of the system quicker. But you can also buy some equipment that will allow the air to get out of the system even faster like this little tube. What this will do is that the water will go up in this tube and then instead of making a huge turbulence inside the reservoir, it'll just go out all of these little holes and make sure that you're not having very much movement in the reservoir. Because if you have too much movement in the water, the air might just get sucked right around the system again, which is not anything that you would want. So, for this reservoir you can just screw these pieces off you can remount it with this part. All of this is accessories that you can buy from the water shops. So take this one off and then just input the new one. There is a lot of different reservoirs that you can use in a water cooling loop. This reservoir is called a cylinder reservoir. And you can also use the thing that they are calling bay reservoirs, which was the one that we showed in the presentation earlier, where you just put the reservoir in the bay here and um, that's all up to you if you think what looks best in your system or how much room you have. A bay reservoir can typically be used because it's only taking up a single bay or maybe a double. And you can also buy pumps that will fit into a bay reservoir. So let's see, we have to mount this correctly. So, when you have screwed this on, simply take this one and put this one on too. And you have an upgraded reservoir that will allow you to use very powerful pumps without having to think about the air getting sucked around in the system. And with this reservoir you have to remember to close all of the plugs that you're not going to need. Because obviously when you're putting this in your system and if you forgot to put a plug in, then if you wilt, uh, turn, tilt the computer, you're going to have water all over the place, which is not desirable.
and we need to remember to put the O-rings on, otherwise it won't help very much. This reservoir has a ton of options of how you can plant it in the case, which is why there is so many holes. So you can either choose to have the intake in the top or in the bottom or on the side, or that's all up to you or how it will fit best in your system. For now, we'll leave one of the holes in the top open because we want to have a fill port, which I'll talk about a bit later, and also one in the bottom. So, the next part we can talk about is a fan controller. Because obviously, if you have a water cooling system and you have a lot of fans in there, maybe three fans for this radiator, you would like to be able to turn the fans off and on. Because then you can actually control how much the fan, how much noise the fans are making. So if you input a, um, a fan controller like this, you can put one fan on each channel. And you can see if I turn off two fans and leave one open, how much or will, it, will the temperature going to be? So, and if you're playing games or you're running some heavy applications, you can just turn the fans up and turn them down when you're done again. So, how much time do we have? Great. Okay, and for the fans. When you're picking your water cooling system, there is maybe a thousand fans out there that you, that, that you can use. And what you want to look at when you're looking at fans, you basically want to look at the RPM, which is rotation per minute. So if you want a very high performance system, you want high RPM fans. But if you take high performance fans, you'll also get a lot of noise. So if you want a very silent system, you're gonna need to have fans that runs around 1000 RPM, which is where you barely can hear the fans. So between 800 and 1000 RPM, it's the soft spot for having fans in a water cooling system. If you go above that, you'll be able to hear the fans drumming in the system, which is not something that you would like if you just spent several hundred euros on a system for your computer. When you have to mount the fans on the radiator, you can, use this, you can do this in two positions. You can make the, the fans blow air through the radiator, which is this setup, where the fans will suck air in and then push it through the radiator. Or you can take it on the other side and you can make them suck air through the radiator. If you make them suck it through the radiator, then it's a bit easier to, to clean the radiators because over time, a lot of dust will collect. So on this particular setup, the dust will collect on this side and you can just take a vacuum cleaner and then just vacuum the dust off. But if you mount it on this side, you'll have to take the fans off each time that you have to, to, to vacuum it. You can mount it on this side and then just put filters on the top here. Well, that's all up to you and how you have it in your system. So we'll try and mount these three fans on the radiator here. For this radiator, there are two kind of screws that goes with it because some fans are thicker than others. And if you use a too long screw in the radiator, you'll actually risk to puncture it and you'll get water all over the place, which is not something that you would want to see. So you have to check it. And as you can see here, this particular screw is way too long for this radiator. So we'll try the other ones instead. And as you can see, these ones should, put, should fit perfectly, which they also do. So, just put those four down.
and mount them with an umbrella key. There. We can mount the rest later on. But this is how you want to have it. And when you have it inside your case, you can see that it'll just punch you out through. So, for the last thing, or second last, we're going to talk about the CPU block here. And we're going to actually try to open it up so you can see how it looks on the inside. If we just get it up there. A couple of years ago, CPU job blocks was almost just like hollow, so it will put, air, put water through them. But in the last couple of years, several new technologies have been made, where they, the companies that have made these blocks have put very much research into looking how the blocks actually can perform better. Because obviously, if you want to sell your block, you have to have the best block on the market. So if you open this up, I don't know if you can see it, but the, uh, the surface here are very um, smooth and actually polished to get a better contact with the CPU block or the CPU uh, processor. So, on the inside here, you can actually see that there is very small fins that the water will then be pushed over to transfer the heat away from the CPU. And obviously you have to have some very fine machinery to be able to make stuff like this. Which is also why a block like this could easily cost 80 euros. So let's see if we can get this to fit again. Again, it's very important to remember to have the O-ring in. Otherwise, you're going to have water all over the place. And there we go. For this block, depending on if you have an AMD or an Intel system, you have um, different fins that you can mount on it to make it fit your processor. This one is fitting the Intel i5 series and i7 for basically all of the processors they have made. In the blocks in the old days, it wasn't important to remember where the intake and the outtake of the block were. But seeing that these blocks have these small channels down in them, you want to remember to have the intake and the outtake placed right. Otherwise, the block won't perform properly and it'll make a lot of noise in the system. So on this block, the intake is the middle hole and the outtake is the top hole. So you want the pump to pump the water in there and then it goes out here. So we'll just mount two fitting on this and make it ready.
and then this is also ready for mounting. So let's get some fittings on the reservoir as well. There is several different hose types um, depending on what system you have. The most normal hoses are 10 millimeters in the inner diameter and like 13 or 16 in the outer diameter. You can see the hose we have here. It's 10 in the inside and then 13 on the outside. You can also get hoses that are 8 millimeters on the inside and 10 on the outside. And likewise, you, likewise, you can get hoses all the way up to 19 millimeters which should actually move the water around easier because there isn't as much resistance in it. But as several tests have shown, it's almost, it doesn't matter what size hose that you, you, that you use. So take whatever you want and then just what you think looks best in the system. And don't think that the bigger the hose is, the better the cooling is gonna be. Because the, the difference between a very small hose and a very large hose can be 0 0.01 degree on your, on your, on your water blocks. So it's almost not worth thinking about. So we have installed the fittings here. To make it easier to fill the reservoir up, you can buy a little, I don't know what this is called, but <laughs> it's a um, thing that makes that you don't spill as much water when you're using it. So just simply screw this on here and you can just pour the water or fluid inside without having to worry about standing absolutely still. Next up, we can look at the water block for the GPU. This is an identical block as the one sitting over in the system over there. And it's a little bit different from the actual CPU block because where the CPU block only had to cool one component, this water block actually has to cool several components. As you can see it on here, you can see another monitor there. The, um, this, the, the GPU itself is cooled in the middle of the block and then the RAM is cooled on the outside here and the volt regulator is over here. And this is where we showed before with the mounting of the block. And this block actually functions just as the CPU block over there where it takes water in in one of these channels and then it blows it over the components and then back out. In GPU blocks, it's not important to remember where the intake and the outtake are because the channels on the inside don't have any direction. So you can use whatever is fitting for you and it won't make any difference. So we'll put this over there. And this was the thermal paste or thermal tape that we were using before when you have to cut this up and then mount it on the block. This block is made so that you can use it in crossfire or SLI configurations because as you can see, it has holes on the both top and bottom which will allow you to quickly connect it to the next block in the system by running hoses from here and down to this which will make it much easier and you can use much less hose on it. So we'll just mount these. And this is also ready to go then. The last thing we need to mount fittings on is the pump here. It can be quite difficult to know which of the holes in the pump are the intake and which are the outtake. But if you just remember on the simple fact that the water has to go into the center of the pump and then be pushed out the sides, so you can almost every, with every pump you can look at it and say, this is in the center, so this must be the intake. So for this pump, the water goes in here and then it comes out either here or here. So we will mount the fitting here.
and another one here. So now we actually have all of the key components to making our system run. So all we have left to do is actually just to mount them on our system over here, and then we can get it up and running. And I don't know, should we get a break? Just a moment. Should we take the cache modding now? Uh, should we take the cache modding now? Uh, case modding competition, they wanted to get up here. Just a second. If you can, can you ask a wolf down there? Okay, yeah. Great. So, when we wait for this, we can try and unbox this motherboard that we are going to mount our CPU in, and then we are going to mount the water block on this. So, with the water block here, you can see, uh, with the motherboard here, we have to put in a CPU and then mount the water block on the top of the CPU to make it being cooled. And this is the CPU, and we'll just put that in. With most water blocks, you'll normally get a small amount of thermal paste to it. This is uh, thermal paste that they deliver with all of their blocks. So you might want to go out and if you're remounting or mounting water cooling regularly, you might want to go out and buy a large tube of, of thermal paste. That is actually, some of it are better and some of it are worse. And there are like thousands different kinds. But it's all... Um, between a couple of degrees that they can do it by. You can't actually win so much by using other thermal paste. We're talking two to five degrees here. So we'll try to mount it in a X. And when that is done, We'll have to take our water block over here and get this mounted on the system. Uh, something seems to be missing, just a moment. should be able to get it to work without. Depending on your system and the water block you get, you might get a uh, back plate for the water block to divide the pressure over the, black, over the back plate here. But this is a... Uh, kind of low budget water block. So this is not the case with this one. Lay down the table there. And when you mount the water block down, it's important to remember to mount it even. So if you, if you mount it straight, you'll just squeeze all of the thermal paste out to one side. Just put it silently down there. And then you have to pull. 
put one of these spaces down to not scratch it too much. And then these springs will help even out the pressure on the water block. And when you're done with that, simply just screw this on. These can be a bit tricky to get on, but I think we're going to. So, when these are almost on, just take the block up and tighten them from side to side again. Remember to do it in taking first this one, and then this one, and then it's like always going in across to make the mount even. try to count in your head that you're turning like five times around each time because then you'll know how much each screw has gotten and there isn't any golden rule of how much you can turn it down to but if you apply too much pressure on it then certain CPUs won't start because they're having too much pressure but that's not a problem with very many So just tighten them down until you can see that the spring has been loaded a bit. And if you're getting bad temperatures, you can also always try to, to, um, to screw them down a bit more to see if that helps. So that was a CPU block. And we, uh, we certainly don't have a GPU that fits this. So we'll just have to leave this by the side here and we can mount the other fans on the radiator. See if we can find the other screws here. Just as before, we need to remember to take the short ones. So, I forgot this before, but this radiator actually has a drain port down here in case you want it to mount it like this in your system. Then you can take the fluid out here. You can also fill the fluid in if you have it the other way around. So let's just get that plugged up. 
there it was. This can also be very good because if you have your radiator mounted like this in your system, there is a chance that the, it has to be that it'll trap air in the, in, in the top here. So if you, if you loosen this, air, the air can get out quite quick. You don't have to wait three days for it to be blown out. So for this one, we'll mount one fan to each of our fan controller channels so we can control them individually with the wires that we got with the fan controller. There are normally extenders with it. Just one, two, and three. So we just mount these up to each fan. and then just hook them up to the fan controller. The fan controller has six channels, as you can see here, which is number one, two, three, four, five, and six. And you can either turn them completely off or completely on by these knobs on the other side. So for this, we'll just use fan, fan channel number one, two, and number three. So, let's get our power supply out. Which is what we have here. We just leave that there for now. So, now we have all the fittings beside those two. And there we go. It's important never to actually tighten these with a plier or anything like it because if you tighten it too much, you actually be able to strip the threads in it. So if you just tighten it with a finger, and a good little trick is to take the hose, just to quickly put it around, and then just tighten it a little bit more. And you can do that with all of the blocks. And that way you don't have to hurt your fingers by pressing too hard because this will actually, actually just grip on the fitting. Well, we can actually just start now before I put the hose on. Okay, great. So we're going to have a short break here because we're going to have the case mode competition on the other side, or here, I don't really know, uh, where we're going to give our prices. So we'll take a break in about 15 minutes, I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> Hello. Okay, so as you might have heard earlier before, uh, we're having the robotics prices and the modding prices on the Leonardo stage right behind us um, for about 20 minutes. And in the meantime, we're going to move the workshop area to um, right behind that column, the big green column right there. So you can continue working a more hands-on approach with him. Um, so you, he will wait for you guys so you can see the prices and then you can continue the workshop there. This is a last minute change, sorry for that, but I think you will get more of it when you can be closer to the machines and get, uh, be able to talk to him directly. So thank you very much. Thank you, Hans Peter. You're welcome.